Welcome back everyone to another Unreal Engine 4 tutorial and in today's video we shall be creating some footsteps. So if we run on the wood you will hear this sound, if we run on the grass we will hear this sound. Also we're gonna set it up so that it works for the static meshes and for the landscape as well and this works in multiplayer as well. So let's begin. So we are starting off with a default third person template and what I have is eight sounds. I have four for the grass and four for the wood and basically we are going to choose a random sound to play whenever the character puts his foot down. So first let's create the actual physics surfaces themselves and to do so you need to go to the project settings and in the project settings you want to scroll down until you find the physics section and at the very bottom you have a bunch of possibilities so we can add up to 62 surface types but for this video I'm gonna add only two but basically the more you add nothing really changes so let's add a grass and let's add a wood so I'm gonna have two of those and like I said you can add as many as you like and then we actually need to create the actual uh, physics materials themselves so we're gonna right click go to the physics and add a physics material now select the physics material, so this is like the parent, select and I'm gonna call this physics material grass. Then I'm gonna duplicate this and I'm gonna call the other one physics material wood. So let's open these up and what we want to do over here is at the very bottom we have the surface type, we actually need to specify this. So this physics material is for the wood, so we can save that and close it and the other one should be for the grass, like so. So we have set up our physics materials. Now the next thing is we actually need to decide when are we actually going to play these sounds and to do so you would need to go to your animations. I'm gonna set up mine only for the run. Obviously you should do that for the walk and for the jump end as well. So basically every time the character puts his foot down. So I'm gonna stop the animation, go to the side view so I can see this a little bit better and I'm gonna look for a point where the character is putting his foot down and it would be roughly around here. So I'm gonna right click and make sure you right click in this line right here because if you right click somewhere else it's gonna give you other options. So make sure you click in the notifies track. So I'm gonna right click, add notify, new notify and I'm gonna call this foot step. Now since we created one the second one is gonna be a lot easier. We find the next position for the foot so roughly around here uh, maybe a little bit back so right click, add new notify and then we can look for the skeleton notifies because we already have one so we can select the footstep. Do the same thing for the other animations as well if you want to have sounds for different uh, other animations as well and then go to your animation blueprint. Now since we created the notify now in the event graph we have a anim notify footstep event like this one. Then what we want to do is cast to our character so that the character would handle the logic when it comes to deciding which sound actually to play and then for the object reference we can try get pawn owner like this. Now unfortunately right now we don't really have any functions that we could run which would decide the, uh, the actual sound so let's go ahead and let's open up our third person character and let's create this functionality. Now first what I'm gonna do is so that I can randomize these sounds and it would be a little bit easier so that we don't have to hard code that many nodes. I will add a new variable and I'm gonna call this grass sounds. Now I'm gonna make this variable into the sound wave variable type and I'm gonna make sure that this is an array. Then I'm gonna duplicate this variable and the other one is gonna be the wood sounds. Now let's compile this and let's add, in my case I'm going to add four entries for both of these. So I have the grass sounds, so I can grass one, two, three and four. And then for the wood it's exactly the same, four sounds. We have a wood one, wood two, wood three and wood four. So I have all of my sounds in the arrays like so. Now let's create the actual function which is going to decide which sound to play. So I'm gonna create a new function and I'm gonna call this foot step. Now over here first what we want to do is we want to do a line trace by channel so that we know what actually is underneath us so that we know which type of sound we should play. So for the start position I'm gonna use get actor location so basically where the actor is located right now that's gonna be the starting position and for the end I'm gonna do a minus vector minus vector and I'm gonna do basically like 200 units below so I'm gonna shoot the 
uh, line trace from the character to up until 200 units below our character. Then just for the testing, I'm going to enable the fourth duration debug type so that we can actually see the actual impact. And then from the line trace return value, we can do an if to check whether we have actually hit something. Then from the out hit, I want to get the surface type so that we know what kind of a surface type that is that we have hit. And then also I want to break the hit result to basically get the location so I know where to spawn the sound. Now I want to do a switch on depending on the surface type from the true. So if we have hit something, we want to do a switch depending on which surface we have hit. And then I will add a local variable, which I'm going to call local sounds. And this also needs to be a sound wave array. And then on both the grass and the wood, I want to set this variable. And then for the input values, I want to use grass for the top one so that I have grass sounds in the local variable. And then I also want to have a wood sounds for the bottom one. So now depending on which surface we have hit, we're going to store those specific sounds in the memory. Uh, well, basically up until the next effect comes. Now, the next thing that we want to do is bring in our local sounds and we want to get a random. So just look for random array item and it's going to return you one random entry from this array. Now, if you are creating this for a single player, all you want to do is just play sound at location like this, plug in the sound and for the location, you can use the impact point from the hit result. And that's basically it. Now we're going to make this into a multiplayer at the very end of the video. First, let's make sure that this thing actually does work in the single player. Now let's actually run this function real quick. So in our animation BP, where we have the anim notify footstep from the character, we can run our footstep function like this. And now let's actually assign the physics materials to some specific surfaces. So first I'm going to create a plane like this one make this maybe a little bit bigger. So we have one plane, we have another plane. Let's align these next to one another. And I'm also going to add landscapes because it's a little bit different when it comes to the uh, meshes and landscape, how they decide the physics material. So I'm just going to create a very small landscape. Now I'm going to go back to the selection mode like this and then select my landscape and move it up a little bit so we can actually see this and so that we can actually step on it so i'm going to align this next to this one and i'm going to create another one right next to it so there we go we have that now we actually need to create the materials and apply those so i'm going to go to the starter contents materials and I'm going to create, so we have the grass. So I'm going to right click the grass, create a material instance from that one. And also I'm going to use the pine wood and I'm going to create a material instance from that one as well. Uh, it doesn't have to, you don't have to do this, but I'm just going to move these two instances out to the base folder so that it's a little bit easier for me to see. So here I have my two instances. So let's apply those. So we have grass, wood, and then uh, you can't do it like this. You have to select the landscape and then bring in the material in the landscape material. So we have so far so good. Now we actually need to add the physics materials to these material instances for them to work with the static meshes. So open up your material instance and you can select the physics material. Now this is the grass. So let's look for the physics material grass, save that, open up the other one and set the width physics material like so. So now if we press play and run around, you will start to hear the noises. There we go. So we have different noises depending on the surface, but well, there is no sound for the landscape. That is because for the landscapes, you need to provide the physics material separately. And you can find that right above the regular material. So we have the default physics material section and we can look for our grass select the other one and apply the wood one so now this will work on both the landscape and the static meshes there we go so that's good now let's set up so that this actually does function in the multiplayer which is super simple in this case so what we want to do is uh, i'm just going to 
cut out this node and go to the event graph and I'm going to create a new custom event and I'm going to call this multi multi play sound since we are launching this whole process from the animation graph this is getting replicated really really nicely all we got to do is basically calculate the sounds and everything and then run a multicast event uh, for the sounds and then we want to make sure that this event is a multicast event place our play sound connect the execution connect the sound connect the location and just for for the fun of it uh, let's just create a random float in range and then just provide it some di different values so from point one up until one so the, basically the sound would be some of the steps would be more quieter some of them would be more louder that will basically create a more dynamic effect now one more thing that you want to do is make sure that this sound event right here is reliable uh, for some reason these sounds really do require this otherwise they don't really sound as good and some of them don't give a sound at all so make sure you make this into a reliable event then back in our footsteps instead of playing the sound directly we can run our multi play sound plug in the sound plug in the location but well we are not exactly done because uh, this is going to basically create as a double sound uh, also make sure you connect the bottom array as well like this uh, so this is going to duplicate our sound right now so what you want to do is before you do the line trace check whether the switch has authority and only run this whenever it has the authority because this is going to get ran uh, since it's coming from the animation graph it's going to get ran on the server and all also on the local machine uh, so let's just make sure that this only gets ran on server and then the server does the calculations and plays the actual sound so now I'm going to disable the uh, debug type so that we don't see the actual line and let's give it a go. Now let's see if we run around. Here we go. Now everybody should be able to hear these sounds whenever we run around and this seems to be fully replicated. So that's going to be it for today's video. Hope you learned something new. Hope this was useful. Uh, subscribe to my channel, join my discord and see you in the next one.